We'll come back and uh, grade some Spurs managers. Now, we've gone back to uh, the Harry Redknapp days, and we're going to grade every Spurs manager from A to F since Harry Redknapp, which was in 2008. Um, he's the first one on the list. We might as well start with him. Harry Redknapp, how are you going to grade him? Yeah, so if we're sort of doing a comparison between the managers that we have on the list, I probably would give him an A or a B. I might actually give him an A, to be honest, because okay. the, the football we played under him and what we did under him with Champions League and stuff like that, he was sort of pretty much the first one to do it. So I probably would give him that A uh, just because the, the times under him, it was it was a positive time. It was a good time. He's, he's a great manager for us. Mm, yeah, fair enough. I mean, it's a hard one for me to speak about because when he was appointed, I would have been three. So I can't really sit here and provide you with uh, in-depth tactical analysis. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been too much older, to be honest. No, no. So we'll probably move on from Redknapp quite quickly because neither of us can really speak about him. We will move on to a man that I do semi-remember. This would have been, what, 2012 he was appointed. What happened in 20... Oh, 2013, what, the Watford game happened. Great. Um, Andre villas Boas. <laughs> how are we going to grade him? I'm expecting this to be quite low. Yeah, so probably for him, a, a D or an E. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was the start of our, our Chelsea uh, sort of retirement home for previous managers, uh, Midas Boas. So mm -hmm. again, didn't really do too much. Uh, he was there for, what, I think sort of a year and a half in the end, maybe a little bit less. Uh, only had about 80, 80 games for us, really. He had an all right sort of points per game, but didn't do too much to be honest no. uh, apart from that so probably uh i go a d for him a d i think i think that's probably fair enough from what i can remember he wasn't he wasn't excellent but you've had some worse mm. managers um exactly next up sherwood how are we thinking about this one because again from what i can remember he didn't light the world on fire yeah, the, the thing is with Sherwood, as a manager he wasn't awful i think definitely in our history we've had worse but the problem is with him, he's just been so critical of the club after he left. He seemed so salty uh, that he left and we got rid of him because he only actually had about 20, 26 games, I think it was, in charge in the end. So again, he was only there for six months. He just, he hates the club for some reason. Every, I think it was Pedro Porra, uh, he played against you actually it was his, his debut against yeah, he, you yes and you, he did he did get skin to be fair he did get skin it was awful but uh sherwood was talking about like he was the, the biggest flop in the world you think he's played one game that's hard he's played 70 minutes that's mm. so so hard and poro even said i think recently shut up basically so mm, i saw that i think for his time at the club it wasn't too bad but his criticisms of the club and all of that after i think have been somewhat a bit bias and a bit unfair so i'm gonna give him an e an e i think that's fair enough that uh that polo thing looking back it was the gist of what he was saying was fair because he was absolutely yeah, awful agreed. within the game agreed. i think i messaged i'm gonna see if i can find out message you after the game but i said something <laughs> along the line of god polo was absolutely awful today um yeah. i think even in my player ratings uh, i gave him a bit of a low one probably uh let me have a look i said yeah um because i went morning mate april enjoyed yesterday um and i went you're properly poor though Paul and tanganga were both awful barnes ran you ragged which he did which was the last time yeah, harvey barnes was definitely. found in the leicester shirt um <laughs> you're missing since yeah he, he has if, if anyone can find him just drop me a bit i'll be really nice to have a left winger back uh but yeah he was awful in that game granted mm. sherwood was very harsh on him so yeah i think he is pretty fair enough and then we move on to uh, to the shining light, the man that took to a Champions League final, the man who uh, to, that that's all it takes really to be a good Spurs manager. It, 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 Poch, he, uh, you know what? You know what else he did for you? What's that? Do you know what else Poch did for you? So if you, you were... mentioned this two horse <laughs> race. <laughs> yeah, I already know. <laughs> so you were in a Premier League title race, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It was between two clubs. How was it? No, yeah, they're, they're, they're called Leicester City and Tottenham Hotspur. Do you, do you know where Tottenham finished? Uh, so, Pochettino, yeah? Um, <laughs> yes, Poch. So, Pochettino, I think it'd be criminal to give him anything else but an A. Yeah. Um, he deserves it. I mean, where he took the club with the way we were, with our spending. Again, you went 
18 months, three straight transfer windows without signing a single player, which itself should be a criminal offence. To even deal with something like that, so yeah, any, anything but an A, um, it would be awful. So yeah, straight in that A category. Even an A star, would you give him, or was he not quite there because he didn't win a yeah, trophy? Yeah, yeah, I probably would. I would give him an A star. Just although he didn't win a trophy, of course, we would have loved it. Where he took us and how I, I remember the fans during the whole Pochino period. It, it was like the club was just magic. We we all loved it. So yeah, I probably would give him an A star. Mm, fair enough. Um, you sacked him and you went out and replaced him with a man we've already touched on in the podcast, a man who had a whole documentary based around him, a man who is called the special one but didn't do very special things at Tottenham apart from lead them to a final which he didn't even manage. Jose Mourinho. Yeah, the problem, I'll sort of give a little bit of context, the problem with Tottenham is that we do not do win now managers. You look at Pochettino, you look at Redknapp, they were there for a number of years. Someone like Jose and even Conte, mm. they are win now managers. They bring in the players, they will win you something. Look at what he did with United. He won a trophy within the first sort of two years, didn't he? Mm-hmm. So that's what they do. But it's just such a clash with what happens with Tottenham and Jose because you could see. I think I even said when he was appointed, it was less than twenty four hours after we'd sat Poch as well. So he was clearly lined up. It was just never gonna work. I don't. I don't understand why we thought it was going to work. Um, but saying that, and you mentioned it as well, he did get us to that Carabao Cup final. And now, again, I keep saying it, but to sack a manager like Jose Marino, literally nicknamed the special one, mm. the serial winner, to sack him six days before a cup final is absolutely abysmal. I do not understand that decision. While I agree, he probably should have gone at the end of that season. Sacking a manager like him that is known for winning trophies, one of the most decorated managers. He won a Champions League with Porto, for God's sake. You think you could wait six days to let him take this Carabao Cup final. And you never know. He's, a, he's that manager that, that wins trophies. He's a manager that wins those those final games. So it could have been a different game. I'm, I'm going to give him a C mm-hmm. because the sole fact that it could have been a D, but I just feel that he was so unfairly treated with the way that Carabao Cup final went and the fact that he was sacked six days before it. I think a C is fair because we didn't do anything special under him, but it could have been special. We just don't know. It's a strange one. And the follow-up question I did actually have was, would you have, uh, would you have kept him? Which obviously, you know, you've said there you would have done. It's it's one of them with Jose where you were in bad form at the time. I agree you should have kept him, but you were in bad form at the time. So was there possibly a thought from Lever where it's, do we roll the dice now, try something else and see if we could get a new manager bounce for a cup final, which never really happens. But you were on a poor run of form, if I seem to remember. You know, you were doing quite badly. So it's it's a poor yeah, decision we, from Levy. We, we got knocked out, I think it was to Zagreb. Uh, hmm. in the, I can't remember what it was, but at the time it was probably the Conference League actually. Uh, we got knocked out to Zagreb when their manager was in prison somewhere. So again, it, it doesn't look great, but I come back to it. He's a serial winner. You can't sack a manager six days before a final to uh, the guy known for winning trophies. But the, the sort of gist that I understood and people understood. We think that there was some clause in Jose's contract that said if you win a trophy with Tottenham, you get some big payout, 10 yeah. million payout or something like that. And we all think it's just come down to that. Levy's seen that 10 million pound is, well, 10 million is a complete rough estimate. We mm. don't know what the amount was, but say 10 million pound is on the line. And he's thought, oh, we can't afford that. Well, we can, but he doesn't want to pay it. So oh, let's just get rid of him. It would be cheaper. And you think if that is the mentality of the club, profit over glory, money over glory, it's shambolic. Mm. So yeah, going back to his ranking, yeah, I think a C is fair because he just was not given that chance at the end, right at the end. Yeah, I think I think that's one hundred percent fair enough. Um, we'll move from him onto the man who replaced him up until the end of that season. It's Ryan Mason. Uh, sort of link in there was the, the Carabao Cup final. I think there was a, a screenshot that still makes me laugh to this day where they compared Pep Guardiola to, to Ryan Mason. You think, <laughs> this is really what this club has come to. Ryan Mason played one game. Or one yeah, game. yeah, and it was like Pep's got 30-odd trophies or something like that. And he's played hundreds and hundreds of games and Ryan Mason's had like one or two. Um, but yeah, I'm, to be fair to him, he won, I think it was four out of six Premier League games. I might need to double-check that, but four out of six Premier League games. Um, so he sort of kept us where we were. 
again, he didn't really have enough time to show what he could do. No. Uh, my only problem with him, he only was given the nickname Ryan Mate Son because he just played all of his mates, people like Harry Winks, mm-hmm. people like Dyer, even when they're in shocking form, uh, as Dyer is now, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would actually give him a B, as okay. weird as it sounds, because at the end of the day, he was, I think, 29, 30 maybe, and he did step up. He, he won us those four out of six Premier League games um, to keep us in the sort of that top half battle at the top of the league. So uh, I would give him a B because, again, he didn't have too much time either. So it'd be unfair to give him any lower, really. Mm-hmm. So according to uh, football.london, Ryan Mason won four of his six Premier League games in charge. Yeah. Um, so that's one of your stats correct. However, I have checked the uh, Jose Mourinho one. He would have been knocked out of the Europa League because the Conference League wasn't formed until last season. There we go then. Yeah, I, I knew we lost to someone and their manager was sitting in a prison cell somewhere. So <laughs> either way, it's not great. And I can tell you how I know the Conference League was fogged last season because we were in the semi-finals of the first ever Conference League. Look how far we've fallen. <laughs> Speaking of how far people have fallen, we can speak about a hairline, how far that's fallen here. And we're talking about Nuno Espirito Santo. Um, we can still look for the hairline. It's not going to appear. Uh, the blokes had to go to Saudi Arabia and then left that because he got bored, probably, because who doesn't? This was awful. Yeah, what, what makes me still laugh is that he still went to Saudi and won a trophy. Of course he did. <laughs> uh, I know it's not the most competitive league, but he still did it, uh, to mm. be fair to him. But yeah, the whole appointment and the whole situation around Nuno was an absolute travesty. It was never, never should have happened. We were so close to pointing other managers and Conte even was sort of spoke about then, although he had just left Inter, so Mm -hmm. it wasn't 100% sure on him. But we had Paratici and you think, okay, maybe Paratici's got that pull and he's sort of rubbing up his best mate saying, come on, mate, let's do this together kind of thing is what we all sort of hoped. But I don't understand why Nuno came. It was just the most bizarre appointment in the world he, he left Wolves and he did well there but that was Wolves uh, you think he's now coming to a big club would he be able to manage I think he did five wins five losses in the end so 50% win rate but and we did beat City to be fair um, but it was just never ever going to work he never had the fans fall back in as much as any manager that comes in and that goes for now as well I'll give them my 100% back in I'll say from the very start right Let's see what you can do. Mm-hmm. But it just was not pretty at all. And then some of the results towards the ends were, were really poor. So probably an E or an F for him. I'm going to go F be solely because of the fact it was never going to work. Oh. It, it was just written in the stars. He's a nice guy, don't get me wrong. But the we are proud or we'll make you proud comment will live in my head rent free forever, I think. It's such a strange one. This was the bloke that was let go of Wolves because he wasn't performing. Spurs went for every other manager under the sun. I seem to remember you know, it was a running thing or something. You know, Spurs were rejected by seven, eight managers now. You ended up with yeah, Nuno yeah. and it was just never going to work. Nuno is not a good manager. Even, yeah. you know, Everton now aren't picking Nuno. None of these sides now in, you know, relegation battles going, oh yeah, we'll have you because he's not a good manager. He's yeah. average at best. When I saw the notification come from my phone, because again, sort of, obviously I'm in the know with a lot of Spurs news things and sort of you know, predict things before before it's all made official and all that. But there was no sort of indicate. There was like a bit, oh, we might go for Nuno. And you think, yeah, yeah, all right, good one. Mm-hmm. And then I got the notification through and you see all the pictures of him holding up the shirt and his first interview. And I sort of went down to my dad and I was like, look, we've signed Nuno. And he looked at me like, yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, good one. And you think, Oh my god, we've actually signed this guy. Uh, it just from minute one, it was like, uh, okay, yeah. is this really the direction we're going to take? The funny thing is, I had the exact same reaction when uh, <laughs> when we appointed Ranieri. I went, "What have we done this for? This this is stupid. You know, th- <laughs> this isn't this isn't going to work." Yeah. Uh, and uh, well, one of us was right. One of us was mm. right when we said uh, it wasn't going to work. I, well. No, I can't. yeah, I wasn't. Um, Conte, last but not least, well, rank the manager who's still in now, just about, yeah, but he hasn't been sacked as of recording. Uh, we presume he will have been by the time this goes out on Wednesday, yeah, probably. Um, how do you rate his time at the club on the presumption that he doesn't go and win every game between now and the end of the season? 
which he won't. Which is it's written in the stars. It no my luck. It probably will. <laughs> um, Imagine. To be honest, I'm I'm a big fan of Conte. I, I'm probably one of the only ones that still likes him. To be honest, <laughs> um, I'd give him probably a B because okay. I've given Jose a C and he sort of took us to the Europa League and all of that. But Conte, to be fair to him, he took us to the um, he took us to the Champions League. He got us top four last season. He did what Pochettino did. Uh, what Jose failed to do, Nuno didn't even get a chance. Uh, yeah. Did what Redknapp did, took us to the Champions League. So I think Conte B, um, we for some reason seem to have become City's bogey team under that under him as well. We seem yes. to beat them for some reason. Although he wasn't there, we beat Chelsea for the first time in in a long long time. Beat West Ham, all, all three of them on on the bounce as well. So. I would give him a B. Um, maybe his football is not the most attractive to watch, but it does sometimes get us results. Does that mean I want him to stay? Not sure. But if we're looking at where he's got us and where we're sitting now, sort of around third or fourth, I think he deserves a B, to be fair to him. Fair enough. Well, there we go. The man who was a publicly slated Spurs gets a B. On that, we will uh, end this segment here before we come back to uh, rank who could replace Conte. So let's do that.